Hey everyone, good morning. Here we are, and it's very exciting. It's actually going to be it's warming up in Minnesota. It's going to be like maybe 70 today, so everyone's like super excited. I'm also super excited to introduce Michael Norgren, and he's a very good friend. He's part of River of Life, him and his wife. They do divine marriage. They're just kind of uh, wonderful people who love Jesus. And Michael, I asked you to share if you want to come over here and share with what's on your heart. That'd be awesome. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Dave, for inviting me to uh, do Dave's Devo with you all this morning. Um, I'm very excited and blessed uh, to get to share with you a little bit of what God has placed on my heart this morning. Uh, what I'm going to share with you this morning is very personal and dear to me um, because it is a very large part of my story. Um, a majority of my life I have dealt with uh, sexual addiction. It started when I was eight years old and uh, I found my first uh, porn magazine. Um, again, when I was nine, uh, some of my older neighbor friends uh, introduced me to uh, and showed me their VHS uh, porn that they had. Uh, when I was 11, some family friends um, showed me some porn emails. Um, and then when I was 13, a good friend of mine introduced me to internet pornography. It wasn't much long after that I found some other uh, porn stashes um, that some of my my family and friends had had and even found a um, a friend of mine's grandpa and I had a stash of magazine so I was exposed to a lot of people around me who had porn and it seemed to me like it was something everyone did and something that was normal but deep down I knew that it was wrong and I had a conviction <clears throat> that it wasn't right but the enemy had uh, deceived me and the enemy had convinced me that everybody does it and as long as you keep it a secret it will be okay and that secrecy followed me into my adult years and into our marriage uh, where I continued to lie and deceive my wife uh, when it came to uh, my sexual addiction and it caused um, our first 10 years of our relationship to be uh, very difficult and trialing um, it was a roller coaster. I'd have months of sobriety and then fall back into the same thing again. <clears throat> and I could see the pain that it caused my wife, but I just couldn't seem to break free from it until God got a hold of my heart about two and a half years ago. And it was during this time that he revealed to me the three things that I needed to know to break free from this bondage that the enemy had me in. And the first of, uh, first of which uh, is that... Um, I had to learn to surrender control. That I thought I had control over my addiction, I thought I had control over my life, and I could do things on my own. Uh, I thought if I could just try harder, I'd be able to break free from this, and uh, that just wasn't the case. I tried uh, marriage counseling, individual counseling, pastoral support, mentors, um, tried praying harder, reading more, memorizing scripture more, and it seemed like no matter how hard I tried, um, I would fall back into the same cycle. I would end up becoming exhausted and, and falling back into it. Until uh, a mentor of mine two and a half years ago said, Michael, uh, you've been trying so long to just man up and try things on your own. And what you really need to do is God up. <clears throat> you need to surrender control and to say, God, I can't do this on my own. I need you. I need you to give me the strength to do this and that you need to take up your cross daily and surrender this to him. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12.9 says, I will boast all the more in my weakness so that the power of Christ may dwell within me. And that um, is so true for me. I need to acknowledge, God, I can't do this. Um, these things are too hard in my own flesh to do on my own and I need your strength to do it. The second thing that I had to realize is that um, the enemy ha held me in bondage uh, with guilt and the shame that he put into my life. As a teenager, um, any time I would relapse, I would just weep and I would cry afterwards because I didn't want to be doing this. Um, I knew it was wrong. I had the conviction that it was wrong, but yet I still continued to do it. And like Paul said in Romans 7.15, right, he, he begs the question, why do I do what I do not want to do? For what I know I should be doing, I am not doing. 
And uh, that was my life verse as a teenager. God, why am I doing these things? I don't want to do it. And um, But yet I could not break free. And uh, in our marriage, um, any time I would relapse, uh, I could see the pain and the devastation that it caused my wife. And that just uh, led me into more secrecy. It led me into um, lying to my wife to keep from hurting her. And uh, that only drove the addiction uh, worse and made the fall that much harder. Um, until God revealed to me a couple of years ago his unconditional love for me. Uh, that his love is not based on performance. His love is not based on um, my striving and the things that I did. Um, it was during this time that I was praying for our children. I, I saw some behaviors in them that I wanted to fix and I wanted to change. And because of those behaviors, I, I got down on my knees and I said, God, I pray for my children. I pray that you would change their hearts uh, so that they can, uh, so that they would not do these things anymore. And it was during that time that God spoke so loudly to me. And he said, Michael, for years, for 15 years, I've watched you deal with this sexual sin that you know is not right. And for 15 years, I hurt for you as I watched you do these things you didn't want to do. And uh, he said, I've always been here for you. I've always had my arms wide open for you. I've just been waiting for you to turn around and see me. He said, I've never guilted you. I've never shamed you. Um, I've always loved you. And it was that unconditional love that I needed to recognize that I didn't have to earn, that I didn't need to perform for, that I didn't need to try harder or, or read more scripture or uh, serve more at church to earn his love, that his love and grace was always there for me and I just needed to accept it. So after I was able to surrender control uh, to Jesus Christ, and to boast in my weakness so that his strength could live within me. Once I was able to surrender, um, surrender that control and then to accept his love and grace in my life, uh, to realize that he loves me regardless of my performance, uh, that I don't need to hide in guilt and shame from him, um, that he says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Um, and that it was in me trying to hide and escape it that I was causing me more harm and more pain. Um, so once I was able to accept these two things, I was able to break free from uh, the bondage and the chains uh, that held me captive. And uh, in Genesis 50, 20, it says, For what the enemy intends for evil, God will use for good. And uh, in Revelations 12, 11, it says, The enemy will be overcome by the power of of the blood of Jesus Christ and the word of our testimony. And it is these two scriptures that gave me purpose and meaning in the pain. Um, what was a very difficult first 10 years in our relationship together, God is now using for good. And Heather and I are now uh, getting to coach other couples on how to have success in their marriages. God is using our brokenness um, to help others. And what was um, such a struggle for me in my past with sexual addiction, I'm now able to use to help other men to break free from these str struggles that they have and find victory and freedom. Uh, what the enemy tried to use against me, um, technology, God is now using um, to allow me to develop new apps and um, websites to help people break free from uh, coping mechanisms and and bondages that are holding them captive. And so whatever it is in your life right now that you are dealing with um, or that you have dealt with in the past, whether it's an addiction, whether it's a divorce, uh, whether it's a wayward child or a loss of a loved one, whether it's depression um, or um, anger, pride, whatever it is, just know that um, God is there for you that if you can surrender uh, control to him and, and boast in your weakness and allow the power of Christ to dwell within you, if you can break free from that shame that the enemy tries to uh, hold against you and accept Christ's love for you unconditionally, that you don't have to earn it, um, you can be victorious. And then to use that 
uh, use your story to bring God glory. So um, let me pray for us this morning before I pass you off to Dave. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you for uh, allowing me to share my story, Lord, for humbling me enough to get to be vulnerable with everyone online and to share uh, the things that you have done in my life, Lord. I pray for hope and encouragement for everyone listening online right now, Lord, that you would let them see uh, the tactics of the enemy to keep us enslaved to the things that we do not want to do, Lord. So I pray that we would all learn um, to cease, cease striving, um, to learn to accept your love and your grace and to surrender control over the things that we cannot control on our own. And Lord, that we would be able to use our story to bring you glory. We thank you for bringing us purpose in our pain. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, this is going way below the waterline. And Michael, what a what a man of an integrity he is. And, and just, you obviously have that relationship with God now where you're able to share freely for his glory. Please share this uh this great teaching with would just spread it out this thing should just go viral to be honest because since we've been hunkering down according to what i've been reading uh pornography is up 60 percent and so we really really need to speak into this because uh we're not fighting for victory we fight from victory and that's basically what michael just talked about jesus died on the cross resurrected from the dead and he has the power and the love to help us all work through this and all these different issues because we all have them every one of us is touched by this message whether it's your marriage anger fear porn whatever drinking whatever it would be so what a timely timely message we'll see y'all 9 a.m uh, sunday or next monday for devos at 9 a.m have a great and productive day in jesus christ